Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another another episode of Writer's Chat. I'm Johnny Alexander. I'm really glad to be with you today. It is our joy and our privilege to talk about all things writerly here on Writer's Chat. And today will be really fun. Um, my daughter and co-host is with us, Bethany Jett, and she's going to be talking about content creation. So I am just, well, let me say a couple things. Um, Bethany writes nonfiction and she has had two books released lately. Well, has the second one actually released? Only to us. <laughs> Only to you. Okay, so yes, there you go. They Call Me Mom, written with um, her business partner and, and close friend, Michelle Medlock Adams. And then, so that's coming out very, very soon. And then also Platinum Faith, recently released. Do you have a copy of it real handy or no? Mm, not not in <laughs> arm's reach. Anyway, also written, uh, co-written with uh, Michelle. So they have been very, very, very busy. And I just saw yesterday that the two of them had won an award for their marketing of Platinum Faith from who, Christian Can. It's, it's Christian Authors Network, and we're finalists. So we won't know. Okay if we won or not yet but it was like that, that was such exciting news to to see that morning yeah, that, but, was, that, yeah. that was really cool that was cool well congrats on that and we are excited to have you oh and one more thing just more credentials here for bethany as she talks okay. about <laughs> creation she is in her last class of her master's degree and will um, graduate in December or May, which is it because May. Of, in May because of the way that the year the things go. But tell us what the degree is because I always get it all mixed up because it's a master's in Master of Fine Arts in Communication. And instead of choosing marketing or PR, I was able to do take the classes out of each. So I'm, I'm focusing on both marketing and PR, but not like concentrating in just one of them. Okay. Because they go so they go hand in hand. I they mean, do. Yeah, they do. So there you go. Uh, thank you for letting me brag about my daughter. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Not that you had any choice. But now we're going to turn it over to her and let her talk to us about content creation and how we can put that into our own um, writing lives. Go bet. I'm excited. Okay, so I want to make sure just from the offset, this is not how to become a self publisher or a hybrid publisher or a traditional publisher. This is about thinking like a publishing group or a media group as opposed to sales. And this is an idea that I've heard several times from Gary Vaynerchuk, who y'all know, I love him. <laughs> He's amazing. So <clears throat> I found his article that he talked about this. Yes. Publish, like a publishing group, like he talks about like a media company and in terms of creating content. So I'm going to pull up the article and put a link in here. So I'm going to be doing a lot of screen share today. If okay. that's okay. That's fine. Um, Great. I'm go ahead and grab the link so that there is one bad word. <laughs> I'm telling you because I do not want people to complain to me about it, but there is one. <laughs> so, and, and it'll probably be on screen. So if that bothers you, just close your eyes because it's somewhere in here. All right. So I'm going to share screen. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I don't want to just like read the article. Is this showing up? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. I see. So it. Yeah. the link is in the chat. Um, I think I searched for Gary V. Thinking like a media group or like a publisher at, um, or publishing company, and um, I think that's how I found it. But this is the article um, two years ago media company mentality so i'm just going to scroll down here and it's this is it's all about the content and and distribution which we've talked about so as after we kind of just go through the article and like pick out a couple of key points in here um i'm gonna do some slides from a workshop that i did at the word reverse retreat talking about content and i want to share about um red bull l'oreal and um wendy's and how they're doing it and then how we can take some of those things and put it into like our own yeah that's great stuff so a lot there's a lot to cover <laughs> yeah Great. yeah so yeah. I, here's here's his bad word but he, <laughs> he's basically talking about um creating content around what it is that you're doing or around your brand and so we've talked about content six in here like several times so if you've created like six umbrella categories 
then like you're ready to start creating content around there. So it's really about sharing content and creating stuff that works for you. So I'm gonna go off here because I, I don't want to just read it, but I did pull some quotes. Um, and he said that instead of trying to sell, if you're sharing posts underneath of your content umbrellas, if you're creating content that is relevant to it, then the sale isn't required. And I like that because so many of us might not have a book that we're trying to sell at the moment. We're pre-book. And I think that's probably the most important time to start building brand and creating content. So you're engaging with the audience who will eventually buy your book. And so by create, by doing this, thinking like a media company or like a publishing company, like he says, he doesn't really mean like a publisher, <clears throat> but creating like a media company, then you're creating content around certain ideas that are going to bring in and attract readers. Um, and then he says, um, the content that you produce doesn't even need to be related to your product or to the, like what we would say would be our actual book, because you can say, um, here's the articles that you need to read about this. Like that's creating value. It's um, creating engagement um, for the consumer and you're building relationship with them and also strengthening your reputation as someone who understands what's going on within those umbrella context um, things. And then he gives an example in the article, if you're looking at it, about a plumbing service who, Mm -hmm. um, if they gear an ad, you know, towards, I think he says Yankees fans, like people aren't confused about, you know, oh, does the plumbing service sell baseball or whatever? No, but they're reaching to a specific segment of people who might now remember them because they've been targeted in a way that identifies with something else they like. So like mixing the two things, which is really, really great. And, um, and then the thing, about, oh, sorry, sweetie. I was going to say, no, one I'm, thing about that is that you know, like I read that too and really, really like that example because obviously the plumber, this fictional plumber is a Yankees fan. So it's like just kind of taking those interests that you have and building on those, even if they are very different from the focus of your book. Yeah. And um, I was listening to his Our podcast. Product. He has a curse free podcast now. So I would just Google curse free Gary V. And you, like, you don't, they'll bleep out all of the bad words, but he was talking about um, like a cookie company, I think was the question. And he said what he would do is he would find, um, I think he used sports again as, as an example, but why not create like a, like a cookie for a specific company or say, Hey, we can do these for you. And then put an ad out towards people who are in that demographic, like employees of these companies, because the orders, like just putting a little bit of ad spend out that way, targeting that group might create sales for you, you're still just selling a cookie, but now you're doing differentiators and putting it into where people are going to see it and use it. And so I, I think about that book, how to, I don't have it with me. I just thought of it. Um, how to get a million followers in 30 days, which I've mentioned on here before. I'm still only in the first chapter of it, but there was so much value in that first chapter about taking things like just some quotes and maybe adding some commercial free music to it. Um, or whatever, just doing these little videos of easy content that would be easy to create and doing very low ad spins to try to figure out like who is your demographic um, on Facebook because you've got an entire marketing strategy set there with the Facebook ads. And Gary Vee goes, and we're not going into this today, but he talks about once you're creating that content, then how to move past like what I call family and friends. Like if you're doing sales, like direct sales, you got to get out of that little window. And I think we stay there on Facebook, especially we keep promoting to the same people who are our friends on Facebook instead of, you know, getting out of there. And so he kind of goes into influencers and um, why Facebook ads are still a good thing for us to do. So not that we're talking about Facebook ads today, but anyway, so that's kind of where this whole idea came from uh, where I got started thinking about how to think like um, a media company instead of just focusing on one product, but thinking about what the audience is interested in all around and really pulling the content six. So that's, that's the beginning. That was the beginning of this. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. So I'm going to share screen again real quick. Just wanted to give an example. I saw this uh, this morning from Stephanie Jones, who we've had on here as our guest, and she's an author and speaker. Um, giving Gal is her website, and she has a book called The Giving Challenge, which is all about giving back to organizations. And then she's got the Gratitude Challenge book, which is coming out um, pretty soon. And so what she's doing is she's um, 
news hacking, basically. Like what's going on right now is that there's some um, states are voting. And so she's tying what's going on in current events with her brand by creating this graphic that gives some ways to just be kind and to um, spread positivity, which is part of her message. And so like, this is a great example of creating content, thinking like a media group. She's thinking about what's going on and then she's adding value with these things. And, and honestly, she could just change the words election day and put that almost anything could be applicable to these things, like how to be nice at church, <laughs> you know, how to greet guests. I mean, really anything. But I thought this was just kind of so smart because she's engaging in the conversation then. So I thought, and she's got seven shares on it, which I thought is great. I mean, depending on what metrics you're paying attention to, I like to look at how many people share, how many people comment, and she's got seven shares on it already. So I thought that it resonated. It's resonating with people. So that's an idea. Mom. Wow. I was, I'm trying to get the million followers link in the, in the, oh. chat, so I was a little distracted, but I agree with you. That, that is a great idea. Yay to Stephanie. Content six is uh, just an idea that my sister came up with, and it's basically taking, we make six boxes, <laughs> or like we number our paper one through six. We do this all the time. We consistently revise our content six. <laughs> And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably every quarter. <laughs> I and, <bet>. um, <laughs> yeah, and so we just we just think of um, and it doesn't have to be six, but we just think of six broad umbrella categories that kind of help define who we are as a person, as a brand, things that we like, and then it kind of helps focus on what we're going to post on social media, perhaps with the exception of. Facebook personal page because that's really more of like a place to be personal with people. It's not so much a place to be marketing. <clears throat> but um, so like on Instagram, for example, so like I, I like to like Michelle, um, my co-op there, my best friend, business partner, she loves to fish and fishing is one of her content six. She does it all the time. You know, she likes to write for like those kinds of magazines and things like that. So fishing would be one of hers. And so anytime she's doing anything fishing related, it works for her in her Instagram feed or if she's putting it on Twitter or, or any kind of thing, but it's not for me. <laughs> it's not one of mine. So like if I go fishing with her, it's probably not something I'm going to put on my Instagram main feed because it doesn't fit within my content six. It might be something I might put um, on my Facebook personal page. Like, Hey, Michelle and I went fishing because the, they would care more about that. Michelle and I were out doing something together rather than the fishing aspect of it. Or I might put it in my Instagram story you know, and tag that way. So it's just kind of a way to hone in like what you're going to post like on Instagram feeds and Pinterest, I think works well for this too. At least if you're trying to get your six main idea boards set up, you know, fishing wouldn't be one of mine, but then planners and journals wouldn't be one of Michelle's. So if she gets something, she might put it on her Facebook page, which is not going to be something she's talking about on her Instagram. So it kind of helps you know what to post and not post. I hope that helps kind of explain that a little bit. And then we, 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 we like, no, oh, that was a lot. I was like at an auction here. <laughs> I was trying to say we also add in like numbers underneath those big content categories about like what that means to you. So like for writing, if we could all have writing as a main content category, yeah. that if we each listed five things that we would post about writing, it would be very different probably for all of us. And so that just kind of helps you figure out what you're going to do. Yeah, we should have also work with. We should have people put in the chat like something not writing related that would be like a content content six umbrella or bucket or box for you, however you want to um, define it or that because it'd be interesting to see what some of you come up with that we might not even know that you're interested in. So, so try to do that. Put something in your box that's not writing related. Yes. And Melissa's hit it is first out of the gate with Irish history and Vikings and tea. So yeah, really good. That's great. I love that. And also this also helps determine what your bio is as well. So it can help you write your bio based on your ah. content six. So like my sister, for example, she just got a puppy and um, we will text each other screenshots of our Instagram bios. And if one of us changes it, the other one usually changes theirs too. Because then we have to <laughs> ours all of a sudden. 
but she had something about her dog in her bio. And my first question to her was, is your dog going to become part of your brand here on Instagram? Because if not, it doesn't need to be in your bio. Like, no, it that doesn't. harsh. <laughs> no, it wasn't harsh. That's how we, that's, we, that's, we were in a strategy mode. There's one time she's like, Bethany, get, fix your Instagram bio right now. Take that off. I know okay. that. I meant not to allow the dog to be in the bio, though. Well, my dogs are in my bio. <laughs> Do you post about them? No, but they, well, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. My newsletter. So I'm like, my newsletter. How much other people get to see pictures of my dogs? Probably more than anybody else. But, but yeah. So like. I've gone back and forth on this because now that I have Sadie, I'm like, do I want to be, do I want to use up my character count to talk about palms? Mm -hmm. And do I really, am I really after that group right now? And so like it was there for a little while and then I took it back out. So <laughs> like if we do dog training, it'll probably go back. It'll, it'll move into a content <laughs> category. So. Oh gosh. So there's that you guys. All right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. I kind of got off on that. Um, okay, so I have some slides from okay, the let's workshop. Slides. <laughs> let's do some slides. <laughs> Did anyone else talk about, oh yeah, we've got a few more. Cooking and family from Norma. That's really cool while you're getting your slides up. Learning how to prepare taxes. Ooh, <laughs> I'm with you, Mary. That's kind of yuck. <laughs> and cats. Yeah, gardening and sewing from Renee. Hi, Renee. I'm glad you're here. Glad you're with us. Um, yeah. Cooking is great because you can put recipes. Mm -hmm. And it's popular. Food is such a huge thing on Instagram. And, yeah, it um, is. And Catherine's brand is Snarky Rainbows. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> uh, edgy Christian historical fiction is Melissa's. All right. I was waiting to see if any. No, they don't need to match your current work. And that's kind of what he was scared. He was saying like baseball has nothing to do with plumbing, but if you're cooking something like go ahead and share it. Like it doesn't have, if this does not all have to be directly related to the book that you are writing or working on at the time. Because, because you want people to get to know who you are too. And if they share your, your interests and, and other things, then that helps build that. Um, it helps to build that relationship. So yeah yeah yep All right. and pets are a popular one really i mean because uh, lots of people have pets and they love their animals and you know so forth and so on <laughs> well publishers often will hope that there's any a dog or yeah, a cat right. so they can put it on the cover they they sell. Put it on the cover yeah <laughs> um if i have to name a brand is it center on my work so critters of all kinds and <laughs> Yeah, I like the way Catherine said that. You're the brand. Yeah, you are. So, like, whatever I, you love. So, like, for example, we've had we've got two books releasing this fall. The Pla Platinum Faith Christian Living Book and then a Mom Devotional. It's, like, really two audiences, even though there's a lot of overlap there. And so as we were writing the book, I started Moms became one of my content six. So like, a lot of parenting memes, like, mom fails, like, all those things that we kind of, like, enjoy about parenting with each other online those kinds of things um that could change in a year from now when i've got another project and like the cinderella world the dating book that's something i want to bring back but it's not a content six right now because i've got other things that have to be in those categories it could be content nine it doesn't have to be six but sometimes some feeds that are really really well done even go to i've seen some that have just narrowed it down to really three and if you just look through their photos you could pick out the three things that are consistent in almost every Oh, image or wow. there's one piece of it down it and the feed looks beautiful and it's very targeted and then it can grow really well so wow. it just it just kind of depends you know i'm like prime by the book abby um i've talked about her we can look at hers but she's fantastic but yeah you're a brand that like content six lets you get out of just the writing aspect of yourself and into like other things that are going on in your life or what you like and those are things that you can be talking about as thinking like a, a media media group too so let me just go through a couple slides okay. 
So I'm sorry that I have to have like the side, the slides on the side. It, if I go into presenter mode, it takes away the whole screen for me and I can't see um, like you or what I'm doing. So um, with content, this is, you know, marketing is about the message. It's not about me. Oh, cute. <laughs> so sometimes we forget that. Like we think it has to be about pushing um, a book. And then, um, I know you guys can kind of see the sides and I've already told you what brands we're going to talk about. So I kind of ruined it, but just looking <laughs> at these photos, any guesses, if you didn't know the brands, what would be something that would tie them together? Any thoughts, mom, how these pictures are? Well, they, they look like extreme sports that I would not be involved in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That I might watch <laughs> on television and think, oh, wow. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know what, um, I forgot. I know the two brains you said. I don't remember the third one that you said. And I know it's not Wendy's or L'Oreal. But um, I would say it could be sports equipment. It could be the clothing. It could be an adventure outdoors type company, like a whole store. Yeah. So who is it? I... It is Red Bull. Oh, Red Bull. Okay. So, well, okay. So like Red Bull, um, let's, I'm skipping around. So Red Bull has a very defined target audience, just like when we write our target audience in our book proposals and it's young men who love extreme sports. Yeah. Well, that eliminates middle-aged men, <laughs> old men, <laughs> men with money, women <laughs> who love extreme sports. You know, that's a very niche audience, but yes. successful brands, they, in marketing class, they, in one of them, they talked about you market to your, towards your cool kid, who is your target audience? Because everybody else who's going to buy your stuff wants to be that very 1% cool kid. Right. And so that's who you market to because everybody else will come in. And so this is a very, very niche group. Not only is it people who love extreme sports, but it's also a very small category of those people. But what Red Bull has done really, really well is that they've aligned themselves with all of these extreme sports companies. So going back to this, if you remember the guy who broke the sound barrier, um, first he, the human to break it. Um, if you can see, it's kind of hard to tell, but on his um, oh. uniform, it's, it's Red yeah. Bull. It's on his helmet. It's on his suit because they were one of the sponsors who put up money for this to happen because they are aligning themselves with things outside of an energy drink because that's at their core what they are. But when you think Red Bull, you might think energy drink, but you also are thinking about extreme sports. So this is the other picture. This was the ad. I just cut out the little thing. When I say it's about the message, not about me, the message is find your wings, but the, I, the, the, this ad is not focusing on the fact that there's a flavor or it's good, but energy, it's, it's aligning itself with this kind of sport here. And the can is small and the graphic is what's big. So like, this is about the message. It's not about Red Bull, but they've aligned themselves so closely that this makes, oh, I love this. And that's what you think of. You think of Red Bull then when you think about these extreme sports. And you want to be that person vicariously. Like, you want to live that adventure and you think if you drink Red Bull, then yeah. There is something psychological to thinking yeah. to having a tool will make you more productive. Like mm -hmm. have, like have using this system then equates to the success. That's a, that's psychology. And then this, um, the skateboarding again, the ad Red Bull is really small down at the bottom. It says Red Bull gives me the energy. I need to make it to the top. And there, um, that's Andy McDonald, who's a 2007 X games gold medalist. Wow. Um, so like just to break it down, like we have the target audience, but then if we were to break it down into genre, I just took genre because that's all the different kinds of, those are all the different sports that they kind of align themselves with. Um, so like you can be more than just one thing is they've taken extreme sports as a very broad umbrella category, and then they can focus their content based on all of these little things to just kind of like what we're talking about. And then with Red Bull, like they don't just focus on extreme sports. Here's an ad that they had targeted to women. And this one was coming from, um, it came in the winter, so it was an evergreen type of content. And the, the idea behind it was to get people off the couch and start moving. So again, it goes in with that whole, it's not an extreme sport, but it goes along with that health, fitness 
category that they're in. And then the Red Bull, if you can see, it's the small thing down on the gym, so it's subtle. Um, and then there's a little logo down there. And then I love this one too. Like how could we take things that we're doing and align it with holidays? Because energy drinks have nothing to do with Christmas, but oh, Christmas shopping, we all relate to the yeah, sprint okay. before Christmas. And they tied in the word sprint, which again goes back to their exercise, health, extreme sports connotation. This is really, they just have really, really brilliant marketing. And again, this one is geared towards women or anyone who's doing those like last minute shopping kind of things. It's funny and it's relatable, but it has nothing to do with the drink. And so they do have a lot of ads that are just about the drink and flavors. Here's what it is. But then they also do a really good job on this side of it where they make you like them as a brand, even if you don't like their drink. I don't think I've ever had Red Bull. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then the questions when I was teaching is, you know, what is my brand? Who is my audience? And then how do I take me out of my message? So Red Bull is one of the companies that gets talked a lot about in the marketing thing. So like if you're ever wanting to Google more about them and what they're doing so that you can kind of apply it, they're a company to look at because they're really, really smart. Like with the guy with the sound barrier, it was um, was it an hour or three hours, I don't remember that he was in free fall, that they were watching it. Red Bull was in the shop the whole time because of the uniform. It was just so yeah. smart, yeah. so smart. And then L'Oreal, so let me stop share here so I can pull up my other screen. So um, I wanted to, so then talking about L'Oreal as a, as a media group, I think they're probably a really good one for us to look at because we can put ourselves, okay, we are L'Oreal and here's our categories and here's our topics and we're gonna look at their blog. Their blog is um, really amazing. So I'm gonna pass it to you for just a second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what we've got going on in the comments. Some talk about taglines and, and um, how to figure those out. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that can be a really hard thing to do, but, um, I don't know that we really want to get off on this topic right now, but since Bethany gave me the floor, there's an interesting podcast, um, episode of novel marketing that talks about do authors really need taglines and several years ago they did. And now for fiction, especially probably not so much now, unless you've got one that really, really works because again, people are looking at you and they're looking at your books and they're not necessarily going to remember your tagline. Brandilyn Collins has one, it's called Expect the Unexpected and she also has trademarked Seatbelt Suspense, but she did that early on and it has sort of become synonymous with her and her in her books. But anyway, um, it might be an interesting thing for you to listen to. So it's the Novel Marketing Podcast and just go through until you find that episode. Um, it's actually an episode of a, re a repeat from a couple of years before, but I was on a, um, a chat thing with Thomas Umstadt Jr. And I asked him if, if the advice was still relevant now, two years later, and he said yes. So, um, so sometimes we, we, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about things that maybe aren't quite as important. I think knowing your content six may be more important than a tagline for a fictional author on their website. Um, because I know that's, I know that's really hard to, to come up with. And, it, and it's hard for me because I write in multiple genres and, and so nothing has ever really worked or stuck or anything. And so right now I have, what do I have, Bethany? Country, country roots and vagabond wings because I was born on a, <laughs> grew up on a farm and I was just like born, born in the country and, and I do, you know, some traveling stuff, but that doesn't really work for my audience. I mean, it doesn't really work for, um, cause I don't write country stories necessarily. So, you know, it's, it can, it can just be a, a hard thing to figure out and something I'm going to be revamping here in the next couple of months too. Okay. Turning it back to our expert. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm not information. Um, but sometimes arms are tagline. wonderful, Renee. I agree. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes taglines are more like people write their mission statements as a tagline, and it's really more for them and not for the reader. Exactly. Kind of like what you're saying. Yeah. No. Okay. Ready? Yes. All right. Here we go. L'Oreal. Well, before we before we talk about L'Oreal. <laughs> 
So the reason L'Oreal is in this group, and I don't, we, I would like to get to Wendy's too. I want to watch the time. Wendy's is fantastic, oh, yeah. by the way. I want to hear about Wendy's. So last, my last class was um, PR, integrated PR campaigns. And we had to use, um, they gave us a, a list of companies that we had to choose from who were launching a product. So we had no choice over it at all, except to pick from the list. And so I chose L'Oreal and the campaign had to be about them launching um, a women's deodorant. And I'm like, okay. So I tried to get it to, I tried to get her to let me switch it to books <laughs> and I was not approved. So I learned a lot about L'Oreal um, as part of the research. And um, I am so impressed with them as a company. I learned uh, so much. They're not just um, cosmetics. It's actually the L'Oreal group and they own or underneath their portfolio are so many brands like Biolage, Urban Decay, uh, one of Giorgio Armani's, um, I think, I believe, I don't list in front of me, there were so many brands that I love and I had no idea they were in L'Oreal's portfolio. And they do so much like charitable giving and giving back and their mission and I don't know, they're just fantastic. And so then when I was looking through their blog, I thought this, this is how I want to be as a writer and an author with the content that I love to talk about this is what I want to be doing. And so I'm kind of looking to them now too, as, as I go into 2020 and kind of want to revamp how I'm creating content and articles. So I'm going to go ahead and show um, their site and let me see if I can grab the link here in case you want to look at it um, on your own computer. Okay. So one thing, this is their beauty. They call it a beauty magazine. So this is a slideshow, but what I like is they're talking about a smoky eye and then they're talking about um, a tutorial from this beauty guru. And we've talked about when you're creating content to share other people's stuff, it does not and shouldn't be all your stuff. And so they align themselves with experts within their category. And so for L'Oreal, their main one umbrella category, which is great if you can get one main one even, would be, um, well actually it's, it's not even just one, it's, it's beauty, cosmetics, and skincare and hair care are the four really um, that they have. So when you scroll down, um, well, here they are right here. Here's this would be like if we were doing this as an author in this category section one, two, three, five skincare, hair care, hair color. You could put these as just hair though, these um, makeup. And then they do a lot for the environment. So that would even be another one of their content six, which you're not going to see on this page. And so like there's some categories. So think about how you could break down your content six, your categories. And then this is the kind of content type that we could be doing and perhaps should be doing or start adding in slowly. But on this side, they've got articles, videos, slideshows, guides, experts. These are all resources. So when you come to their beauty magazine, it's all about you. What do you, what category are you looking for? How do you want to learn about it? the best, what exactly are you looking for? And so then um, I clicked on this one, is dry shaving a major mistake? Cause I wasn't sure if they were gonna pull any kind of, like if they were gonna add one of their products into here. So this is under skincare concerns and they've got their social media and they have links like embedded in there so that you're staying within, do you see how these are linked right here? Mm -hmm. So that, so they're keeping you on the site so that you're, when you're jumping around or you're going down rabbit trails on this topic, you're also not leaving there to go somewhere else. There's different places for you to go over here. As soon as you scroll down to a certain point, you've got this ad that pops in as a coupon, which is value then for you to know this is one of their products, which is great. So I'm just going to click out of that. And here we've got like a, it's called a listicle or Lena Buzzfeed is like the 21 ways or all those kinds of things for any doing lists. Five, this is not like rocket science, right? They're just breaking down, <laughs> you know, what is this? Six ways that it affects your skin. skin. Yeah, why you shouldn't do it, yeah. And eight shaving mistakes you could be making. Boom, you can click there. And then they've got some other stuff on their website, other places for you to go to so that you're staying here. It's not just ending down at the footer. So that was great. So just looking at their, they're different. Um, here's one. 
best waterproof eyeshadow and why you should use one. Okay, that's great. They're even talking about their brand, but then you could also find another brand if you wanted to. They're not like pulling you in and making you person. Let's just click and see what they said. It's it's beautiful. Yeah, I must said it's very well. Organized. It's very clean. Mm -hmm. And then there's a link to buy. And then again, scrolling down to a certain point, pulls in the ad. And then we've got another list, 10 times to wear waterproof eyeshadow. That's, and, the, and three tips. It's just value. It's just value. So they become the place, here's their different kind of, here's their different categories. And then this would be their lists underneath each one of those. So I just think they're fantastic. I just think they are super, super amazing when it comes to how they're, this is like thinking like a media group. Mm -hmm. They're not pushing one thing. They're going, here's all the things we're going to talk about underneath this umbrella. Here's our content. And here's ways that you can view it. And they've got it in all these different forms for you and on all the different platforms. So it's really about you, their audience. And they have a very targeted demographic as well. I mean, their target is women of a certain age of a, of a certain, um, financial place. I mean, that's, that's key to who they market to. And, um, again, it's niche, but yet this content is for everybody and they are even diverse in how they do their content. They do it for different age groups and, different, you know, make sure they have all the different shades and things. I just think they're fantastic. So, yeah. Cause you know, what we have to keep in mind is we can make our, just like Red Bull did. So make our audience so niche does not mean there aren't going to be other people who aren't going to be interested in our products or our books, but we have to know that very special, unique, ideal reader and know who she or he is. And that way we know where to find them. We know where, if we're like a product like L'Oreal, they know because you said a woman of a certain age, a certain income, they know what magazines that woman is reading. So yes. that's where they're going to advertise. They know what shows she's watching on television. That's where they're going to advertise Red Bull. They know what that young man who's interested in extreme sports, what he's doing in his free time. So they know where to put their marketing dollars. And of course, other people are going to see it and other people are going to use it. But they are focused on where they spend their resources. And we can do mm -hmm. that too. We can be focused on because we know, we know we're, we're all poor writers. <laughs> we don't have a ton of money. So we've got, you know, to use our resources wisely. So we've got to know where we're going to find that ideal reader, where she, where she or he is going to be. Mm -hmm. I think they're great. I, I was really impressed with them as I, you know, through those 10 weeks. I remember talking to you about it, Mom. Like, no, I know. They, they, the more I learned about them. You at first you were so irritated because she went <laughs> and changed, and then you got to where you really enjoyed it. So that was that was cool. I, I did, I did. I want to find the Wendy's, the Wendy's thing. Oh yeah, this is pretty fantastic. I, while you're doing that, I'm going to um, read uh, Catherine in the chat who's with yeah. us. Um, she says she had to get okay with the idea that if people don't enjoy a little wordplay and some snarky um, rainbows, then they wouldn't like my presentations or writings. And you're not everyone's taste, but you have something someone needs. And I, and I, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you know, we're not, we're not all the same and there are going to be some people who just love us and some people who just, you know, uh, uh, but you know, it's the same with us. I mean, we don't love all you know, Bethany and I are a lot alike, but we still have favorite authors that, you know, the other one doesn't really, you know, you know, differences in that, different days. So you can't expect everybody to like you, but, but you find that niche and there are people who love wordplay and who love that snarkiness. And that's the people that you need to, you know, Catherine needs to focus on finding them because they are going, and then they're going to love her and they're going to talk about her and they're going to tell her, their friends about her. And she's, she's going to grow and grow and grow. <laughs> I like you, Catherine. <laughs> we like you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Are you ready? Yeah, I wanted to answer Melissa's question. She said, oh, I missed Melissa's question. Melissa's question. It's a media group for your book that helps you focus that booking platform for your audience. I would say that L'Oreal is, is a media group. They think like a media group. They're a cosmetic company, 
skincare company, but they think like a media group. They're thinking about content for all readers and how to get that message across to the different readers and the different target audiences and then secondary audience and then and so on. So it's really just thinking about creating content around your brand and what you're doing as opposed to some like a, a salesman is the difference. Right. But Gary Vee was saying, instead of being a salesman, you're being a marketer. So you think like a media group, how do I produce content in these categories? Like, and like getting that one umbrella thing, right? Like skincare and beauty, L'Oreal. Okay. But then they have hair care, body care, hair color. They have all those things that go underneath of that. And Michael Hyatt's another good one. Leadership is so yeah. broad, you know, but he does a lot of it with books and with writers, people who have platforms and artists like that would be his niche, whereas leadership for some people would be <clears throat> CEOs. Brand number chart is also like leadership productivity, but it's a whole different audience than Michael Hyatt with the same main topic. So it's kind of like creating your content six and maybe even finding one word, one main bigger thing, and then just falling underneath of that and still being able to do other things, but it's just where you're creating the spending your time. And then well, even the art of Oh, go ahead. Well, the fo <clears throat> as I say, and the focus because and and that can change over time because Michael Hyatt, we've been following him for for years, and he now has gone from being the CEO of Thomas Nelson, and doing all this this informational leadership. But I believe his focus more and more is on um, mentoring young men who are successful in their fields. I mean, so there again, it's not he's not mentoring every young man. It's a young man who can put some money into <clears throat> having access to him and, and committed to working with him on a weekly basis or something. I mean, I forget what it was exactly, but there were a criteria that you had to meet to be able to be part of that um, <clears throat> mentor group that he had. So, you know, your focus too might change over time. Um, you know, as, as you just, but you just got to start. And Renee was talking about just starting. You've got to start and then you can refine it and, and you can see where God is, is actually leading you to do. And, and, and that could change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you want me to go into Wendy's? Sure. Okay. So I have a couple things about Wendy's, but the one thing, um, talking about like me and the message i need to show this slide first i'm gonna do a couple of slide shares okay let me know if you can see this there's a lot of words yeah. on the screen there are a lot of words on the screen so this is towards the end of the workshop and so throughout so after we went through red bull l'oreal wasn't part of the original workshop we went into um integrated marketing 10 the 10 steps of integrated marketing and that is the green list on the right and then so we went through 10 ways that we feel loved and then we did 10 the 10 steps of integrated marketing and so this slide was they had all seen them individually come through and we talked about them and then this was the one that brought them together because on the right in green how we love others those are the 10 steps that i learned in my marketing class this is what you do when you're marketing you're listening utilizing active conversation you respond quickly you're asking questions determining user interest share stories provide value offer surprise and excitement you're engaging and then you remain transparent and when i heard that i thought that is a very christian concept all of those things which is why i think i love marketing so much and this is you know from my class and from my textbook and i was like well what if we take that and, and say, how do we, how we love others instead of calling it marketing? How do we love our audience and how do we love our readers and how do we love other people? Which I think is truly, it puts us out of the spotlight and maybe it's easier to be more self promoting when we're thinking of it in those terms. And so, and then, and they have an equivalent in the blue. And mm -hmm. so, um, <laughs> with Wendy's, they, they do these 10 really, really well. So, so I'm going to go into the Wendy's now, but you kind of needed to see this, the green side first before understanding like why they're all so amazing. Okay. So <clears throat> this is a tweet from a 16 year old um, in 2017 named Carter Wilkerson. And he texted Wendy's, how many retweets for a year of free chicken nuggets? And what you got to know about Wendy's is that they, um, like Catherine, like snarky rainbows, like Wendy's is like the, the queen of snark. Like their Twitter feed is so um, 
a little irreverent. They roast McDonald's all the time. Like the people will ask them to roast them. So like <laughs> the Wendy's people will roast people on Twitter mm -hmm. when they get asked. So this guy, this kid just asks. And so this is a screenshot. Let me make it a little bit smaller. Can you see it? So here's yeah. his original tweet. <clears throat> And Wendy's replied, 18 million, okay? So then Carter Wilkerson <laughs> retweets it. And so he's just saying he needs his free nuggets. He's got to get to 18 million retweets. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Here's what happened. It took off. Just like Amazon, <laughs> live your best life, Carter. Follow your dreams. Hashtag Nugs for Carter started trending. <laughs> Microsoft joined in. Oh so, um, Kathy, is it Kathy Griffin? She did it. So these different celebrities were starting then to, you know, push the, it starts trending. Um, he got over three and a half million retweets on that oh. original. <laughs> Here he is. And he is officially this 16 year old kid who asked Wendy's for nuggets for a year is officially the number one most retweeted tweeter of all time. Um, so not only did Wendy's let him have a year of free nuggets, they also donated $100,000 to the um, Dave Thomas Foundation. And then um, Carter started, um, his, I think his mom has some kind of teams. I'm not sure, but he started a, a mom's run, I think in honor of his mom. And they started donating money to charity as well, like to, to do stuff. So a lot of good came out of this. So Wendy's, um, Wendy's did some great things. Now here's the thing. In 2014, I believe, this was the most retweeted tweet and Ellen held the record um, for this at the Oscar. I know most of you have seen this because it was like the, the tweet that went around the world, they called it. So she had him on her show and she said, Nugget Boy is here today. You know what they say, <laughs> keep your friends close and your Twitter competition um, closer. And so like, I need to look at my um, presenter notes because did I even put it in here? Ah, it must be on my other thing. Um, he had three and a half million and Ellen's was at three something, I think. But that same year, like, so Ellen's was holding at like, I think 3 million something as for the most retweets. The second highest was a Justin Bieber tweet. And it was like um, something 100,000, oh not even God. near a million. So Ellen's getting that 3 million was like a big deal. But <laughs> thanks to Carter Wilkerson asking for the nuggets, like he, three and a half million is, is a lot. So just to kind of put in perspective about how many retweets that actually is. That's so what I thought was really cool about that, going back, let me share the screen again so you so we can see it. Going back to Wendy's, they listened, right? Someone someone saw that tweet from that 16-year-old kid. They actively engaged him. They responded quickly. They didn't ask questions. They didn't really need to. It wasn't that kind of thing. But um, talk about like donating, giving it to him after all those people got involved and he got all those retweets. Um, they were able to donate money that was offer surprise and excitement like that was a you know kind of a fun thing and they were engaging with within there so like wendy's has a huge follower base pretty much because their tweets are so funny so if you google like wendy's roasts we had i have a whole list like i know we're at close to time but i've got them on another slide where i started pulling some of their like super funny ones so we could if you wanted to see those i can pull them up for the after party or you could just google them but <laughs> wendy's is great but they do that they they engage and Oh, by the way, I talked about the chicken sandwich wars between Popeyes oh, yeah. and um, Chick-fil-A, and they released it on November 3rd. They brought the Popeyes chicken sandwich back. It was National Sandwich Day, which is really smart of them to, to choose that day. But I guess they're an official menu item now, so everyone can enjoy a, a chicken the sandwich. Pie. We pie. actually had, we had them the other night. Nathaniel went out, and <laughs> he was out. He was already out, and he brought them. I had, not had one. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was really good. Um, yeah, and just think about Wendy's. I mean, you had Amazon, Microsoft, Google being, you know, doing part of that. And just, I mean, you can't buy that kind of advertising, right? You no. can't do it. And, you know, so there you go. There you go. Apex Marketing Group was saying, going back to the, the chicken sandwich wars was another. We did, I did two. Wendy's was in two of my 
workshops. But they were saying with, um, for those of you who don't know, just for the brief thing was Popeye's released a spicy chicken, or a chicken sandwich that was very, chicken, yeah. pretty much copycat of chick fil <laughs> um, And Apex Marketing Group said that based, now looking at it from all mediums, not just from Twitter, but based on that Twitter war that happened, that um, Popeye's earned an equivalent of like $65 million worth of engagement advertising as a result of that. Like that's how much it would have cost them to get the reach that they did, um, all from a little Twitter war. So it's let's not discount Twitter. <laughs> no, I guess place. not. But you wonder too, I mean, because then they were out of the sandwiches for months, actually. I mean, I think a couple months. Definitely. Yeah, because it was in August. So yeah, so I mean, we wonder how hurtful that was. I didn't realize they had relaunched it again on National Sandwich Day, but that was probably a good smart plan since they had sort of lost some goodwill, I imagine, and then needed to, to rebuild that. Wow, well that, yeah, that was covering a lot. And I know there's probably a lot of questions like how do you, how can I, how do I apply that? I mean, I don't know. I, you know, Bethany and Jill and I talk about this stuff all the time and I still just feel like I'm in the woods and don't know what to do. And you know, there's just, oh, <laughs> just, oh. <laughs> so, so I understand if you're feeling the same way, cause we're not national brands and we don't have those kinds of resources. <sighs> I think if we all just document it, I need to do it too. But everything I do, I think is pretty boring. So I don't really me like too. it. Me too. Me too. I am live a very That's solitary, awesome. boring life. But I mean, it's my life. I like it. <laughs> I'm fine with it. But yeah, it's like, I don't think people are going to be that interested in it. And so I, you know, whatever. But It's easier but, for me to tell you what to do than it is to tell myself what to do. I will say mm -hmm. it's really hard to look. It's really hard to look and say, okay, these are the things that I need to be writing about. I'm, I feel lost when it comes to me. But when I look at you, Mom, I'm like, I know. Mom, you're going on this trip. I need you to take pictures of this, 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 <laughs> and this. I'm like, oh, I, don't want to do I don't want to. I don't want to stop and take pictures along the way. All right. Well, anyway, we are at the top of the hour, but we do understand. I mean, it's, it's not an easy thing. And it's just something you got to pray about, make lists about, brainstorm about, get involved with somebody else, to ha you know, to help them help you do yeah. it. Final word. Miss Bet. Well, I have a I have a shameless self promotion, but not about this. Okay. Um, let me talk about next week, and then I'll let you do your shameless self promotion. Okay. So next week, um, Del. Oh gosh, I just forgot how Didway. to his last name. <laughs> Dewey. 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 Okay. Dewey. Why don't you announce what we're doing next week? <laughs> Yes, I forgot the title of the conducting interviews. How to do interviews? Okay, okay. Dell did way. To know Dell is to love Dell. I will say, he he's amazing. So he found he found Michelle Medlock Adams on LinkedIn. She he said, "What do I do? You know, I'm not creepy. I'm married, happily married. I'm just looking like how do I get started as a writer?" She said, "Go to the writers' conference." He did, I think he went to two or even three that year. He just said, I'm gonna do it. Made tons of connections at all the writing conferences. He, and that was maybe two or three years ago. This is a very short amount of time. He is 14 books under contract or have come out now. Um, not all 14 are out, but like oh, one of his books I've got just right here somewhere, Doug Out Devotions. He started doing, he loves sports. And so he has these sports devotionals but he has gotten interviews with the coaches, the main players, people that you cannot get access to in the locker rooms. Like he has made his way there. And not only that, he has their cell phone numbers. Like they text each other. So like he is now <laughs> friends with all these people that like you'd just be lucky to like see them as they go through, you know, go out of the stadium or the field. It's crazy. And so he's amazing at getting them to say yes to the interview in the first place, getting access to places that nobody else can, getting them, he, he did a book signing with one of the main players. Like it was nuts. And so he's just amazing and, and incredible. So he's gonna be here sharing, he teaches workshops on this about how to secure that interview because that builds platform. Because if you have all these major people for these sports teams writing for you and you're quoting them in there and they're gonna promote the book when it comes out, that's a pretty big deal. That's <laughs> so, a big deal. Yeah, so he's going to be yeah. sharing that. He's 
he is great. He'll be at the Ohio conference this year. I think he's teaching, I don't know if he's teaching that class or he's got a couple others, but from conference to contract. So if you're like, I've been to a conference and I don't know what to do with the connections that I have or how to network, those are questions you can ask because he is great, great at this. He's oh. an extrovert. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> and, Very and he much. Is. He, yeah. he really is just, uh, you know, he, he doesn't know a stranger. So it's, it's really, really cool. And, yeah. and so that's next week. And then what is your um, promotion? Or okay. shameless promotion? <laughs> shameless promotion. Um, so we are hosting a women's conference online it's going to be a virtual summit it's going to be it's called the platinum faith women's conference and this one is going to be online so we, we there's potential to have it at um in north carolina at some point um so it may go to something where we do it in person but this one is going to be from the comfort of your own home <laughs> over three days you can watch when you want to there'll be replays we've got um 11 women that we've interviewed we're doing we've got some great giveaways we'll be doing live each night and then um beforehand our amazing um speakers have also some of them have sent in things to give away so we're doing giveaways leading up to the event as well and that is um going to be through the facebook group which is going to be like our hub so i wanted to put the link in here yeah. and then let you know um like let women in your church know if you guys want to participate in this it's going to be so fun and it's a uh, facebook.com slash groups slash platinum faith and so we will just get you added in there and then you can add people but it's going to be super great so the we're getting the group built up um just started this week and it's going to be in two weeks yay that sounds like a lot yeah we're excited it's not gonna be over thanksgiving is it uh, -uh. it's uh maybe it's in oh. yeah it's the 12th 13 14th i think it's um okay. yeah that's that's actually next week now yeah wow wow so we're excited a lot of fun great great well thank you everybody for being here thank you bethany for all that information we're really um thankful that you presented to us it's a lot to think about and it's a lot to think about how we can you know take that and put it into our own marketing efforts and, and figuring out who we are as writers so we thank you for you know just all the expertise you give us be here next week for uh dell to talk about interviews if you're watching on the replay we're really glad to have you here if you'd like to join us live please do so we're here almost every tuesday morning at 11 o'clock eastern 10 o'clock central and we also invite you to join our um facebook group i think it's just facebook all that stuff writers chat and if you're participating in NaNoWriMo and you need some encouragement join the serious writer NaNoWriMo Facebook group so you can just find this by searching thanks everybody for being here those of you in the chat stay on for the after party and we'll see y'all next week for another episode of writers chat bye bye <laughs>